cascading rules inside of Editor X allows us to create different types of designs depending on the viewport we're on. This means that we could have a small button on desktop while that button could get much larger on a mobile device where a person has to press on it with their thumb. So in this video, I'm gonna go over cascading rules in depth, including what you can and can't do, how you apply it to responsive designs and how you can make your website look great at different viewports. Let's get started. Let's start off with something simple. I'm gonna add in a container here, which I'm gonna position on the left-hand side underneath the logo. I'm gonna make this around 33% and I'm going to add in a paragraph as well as a button to this container. What's gonna happen here is we're gonna have some styling and positioning being applied to these elements where essentially they're going to exist here inside of our layers with these specific measurements of where they are located as well as their parameters such as their width and their size and these are going to stay the same on all viewports so if we go down to tablet we'll see that the width is still 33 percent if we go down to mobile we see the width is still 33 percent the problem however is that on the smaller viewports these sizes are just not enough to fit in all the content that we have and this is where we can apply our very first cascading rule and this rule here will be to change the width I want this width to be larger on the tablet viewport. So what I'm going to do is select the tablet viewport here and set the width here to 50%. Now we've got more room for our text. And one thing you'll notice here now, this percent for 50% of the container, it does not change the width for the desktop because it doesn't cascade up. It only cascades down. So this is still 33% on desktop. But on tablet, it's 50%, and now on the mobile viewport, it's 50% as well. So what we can do here on the mobile viewport is we can increase this to 100%, and we can apply the position to move a little bit off to the left, so it's full width. And now two cascading rules have been applied on the mobile viewport. And this is for its position as well as its width these will not apply back to the tablet. So if we jump back to the tablet, we can see that its position as well as its width is still 50% and it's off to the left-hand side just below our logo. These also do not apply to the desktop where it's still 33%. This is the basic overview of how cascading rules work, but there's more to them than just this. There are some things that will work for cascading rules and other things that will not. So it's good to know the difference. Design-oriented things, such as the padding or the positioning or the width of different elements, will always change based on the rules that you apply. But things such as content and structure and layout might not. These include things like the text inside of an element or the functionality of it, or whether it is nested above or below another item. Let's take a look at this. Here I have this container. And when we head over to the tablet viewport, we can see that this button is a little bit overlapping with the word themes. Now, if I was to change the content of this paragraph and remove the content, this is not a cascading rule. This would actually apply to all breakpoints. This means that if we head back to desktop, we're missing that single sentence over here, which isn't great. There are a few ways around this. The first would be to undo that change and to change the position of the button here and move it below. Since this is a design change, it is a cascading rule that will be applied, which only applies to the tablet and the mobile viewport and will not apply to the desktop viewport. And this is a much better way of doing it. Another example is the layering. So for example, we have all of these items inside of layers and we can see the layers here inside of our layers side menu. We can see that we've got our container and nested underneath we have the button as well as the paragraph. If I was, for example, to move some of these elements outside, you can see that we're not able to do so without actually breaking that layering. And if we wanted to do so, we have to hold down Control Alt. So I'm gonna do that and move the button outside. Now, this has actually broken the cascading rules we previously had because it's now outside of that nested container. And if we headed back to the desktop, we can see that it no longer is positioned inside of that container. And this happens to be the same in terms of the mobile viewport. So be careful when you're doing this. This is why it's often useful to have things such as grids, which we can actually apply cascading rules to. Let's take a look at that. Grids can be changed in cascading rules and they're a great way to position things if you need to move them outside of their current layers. So here I've got a grid of a two by one 
And what I'm going to do is make this paragraph exist here on the left hand side and the button here to exist on the right hand side. Let's head down to the tablet where it's actually applied that same grid of a two by one. And let's change this grid layout to a one by two. Now we can place the button here below. Since we're not technically changing any content, we're just changing the layout, we can see that these rules are applied dynamically and cascading down all the way to the mobile viewport where the same grid has been applied. This is a great example of how you can use the cascading rules to position elements better inside of your designs. I mentioned before that we had a problem here where we couldn't remove a sentence because it was a data element and data elements items you can't change with cascading rules. But there is a trick that we could use to be able to do this. There is the option of changing the font size because the font size is more a design change. So if, for example, we were to change the font size here to 14 pixels so that we can fit this button here in as part of our cascading rules, this font size would be applied properly just for the tablet as well as the mobile device, but not on the desktop. This applies the same for font changes such as its alignment or whether this font is a different font family as well. These changes will only be applied for the mobile viewport and the tablet viewport and are another example of things that you can change with cascading rules. Sometimes you might have paragraphs that you do want to shorten on smaller viewports. There's a few different ways we can do this. Let's take a look at this paragraph over here and see if we can break it into two parts. We'll have the first part here that we had previously, and then we'll copy paste out another part here where we can add in an element of the text that we previously had underneath it. Then we can select both of these and turn them into a stack. Now that we have these two elements, they should exist on all our pages. Of course, there is an issue here where there's a little bit more room and there's an overlap for the button. So I'm going to place the button here below. What I want you to take notice of is the fact that cascading rules can be copied across. When we copied this text element and created the second one over here, the cascading rules that changed the font size as well as the font family did carry across to the lower viewports. But now they work independently. So for example, if we wanted to make a change here, we can make this change to edit this text. And for example, we could make it bold as well as changing the color here to say a blue color. This change will only be applied to this new element, but it will cascade down to the mobile version here where we can see that it's bold and blue. If we go back to the desktop version, it will remain its constant original state. My goal here, however, is to make this one sentence disappear. So what I'm gonna do is head to the tablet viewport, select it over here and select the right arrow. Here, what I want to do is select to have it as do not display or don't display. What this has done is made it disappear, but only for the cascading rules of this viewport and further down to the mobile viewport. On the desktop viewport, it's still visible. We can actually have a look and still identify it because right now we can no longer click on it. We can identify it by heading over to layers and having a look at the stack that we have nested here. And we see this invisible icon here. We can select it and we can click to display it once more again, or we can leave it as invisible. And this allows us to identify that it is currently hidden. There is one problem when you hide an element and that is that its position will change because when it's set to do not display, it does affect the position of grouped or stacked items. And there is a way around this if you don't want, for example, this paragraph to move when you make an item not display. Instead of setting it to do not display, you can select it and head to the inspector menu and head over to opacity on the right hand side here. I'll set the opacity to zero. That way it is displayed, but it actually is invisible now. And this now doesn't affect the position of the paragraph above it. It stays at the top. You'll see that it stays with an opacity of zero for the mobile viewport, but for the desktop viewport, it's still visible, which is great. Sometimes you'll find yourself applying too many cascading rules on a element, such as this container here, where we've applied the grid as well as a percentage. We can remove these cascading rules by right-clicking and selecting remove overrides. This has overridden the width back to 33% as a two by one. But be aware that when you do override it, it overrides it to all viewports below. 
So our mobile version here has also lost the two by one that we were applying, as well as the fact that the button position here is now on the top right. However, we did apply our own rule here on the width of the mobile viewport being 100% and that has remained. If we wanted to remove that, we could simply right click and remove overrides that have been applied on the mobile version, which allows it to go back to 33% here as well. Let me undo these changes. The next thing I want to showcase is that if we have different cascading rules that are being applied on different breakpoints, we can copy them from different breakpoints onto lower ones. Using the copy from breakpoint selector here, I can grab the cascading rule that we have here on desktop or tablet and apply it here to the mobile viewport. While this might not necessarily look great on a mobile device, it can be useful to copy styling that we've applied on the desktop down to the mobile viewport. But in this case, I'm just going to undo it. Finally, we can make sure that we use all the same styling on all the same viewports using the copy on all breakpoints option or use on all breakpoints option. This allows this example here where we've got a more column design rather than row design happening on our tablet and mobile versions that we want to apply on our desktop version. All we have to do is right click and select a use on all breakpoints. Now, once we've done that, we can see that the same styling has been applied for the desktop as well as for the mobile. We might have to adjust it slightly so that it works on all the new viewports based on the new styling that we've applied on those different viewports. These are the essentials that you need to know for cascading rules, especially if you want to build a responsive web design. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this or if you want to know more about cascading rules, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.